I think the best thing to start with explaining what is nano. Because a lot of people, you know, they see nano micro, they don't understand sometimes what's the meaning of that. So no, na one nanometer is one over a billion of a meter or one over a, over a million of a millimeter. So these are the dimensions we're working with. We actually develop in technologies, systems, and chips that, that have similar dimensions. Now, the reason why is nano is important and micro is the best way I can explain it is by looking at Moore's law in electronics. It says the speed of electronics or microprocessors doubles every one, uh, one and a half to two years. The reason is the ability to shrink the size of these uh, smallest elements that we build within these chips as we build them smaller, then we can actually improve the performance and the speed of them. So that's what we work on is the nanophotonics. The photo in Greek is the light, so we work with the nano structures that can manipulate light. And nanoelectronics, you know, the microchips, they use nanoelectronics, as I said, to increase the speed and, bend, and put multifunctions into, into some chips. So I've got the, the team here of uh, two new uh, uh, postdocs, which is Dr. Bafu and then Davendra Moria appointed and added uh, to the team here. Uh, we said we're gonna add two, but hopefully we'll add even more through another external grants, uh, which, which we might generate uh, later. We partner with the University of Melbourne and then the University of Adelaide. Both of them are um, world uh, leaders in the in research in, in, in photonics and in electronics at the same time. So the uh, the uh, the CRN, the Collaborative Research Network. I, I'd like to say a few words. Which Rob started talking about the collaboration, and I'd like to share with you why we collaborate. So collaboration is actually to engage with others and to build on their strengths, and then we add value to them as well. Uh, but through the engagement, we actually build friendships. And through friendships, we actually increase our happiness. The happiness adds to become more innovative. So we become more innovative so we can actually innovate and can do better research. So at the end, it's the aim of this is to become happy so you can become more productive and more innovative. Now, where do we use nano and microphotonics? This is like microchips and micro and nano, op nano optics and photonics. We have several uh, projects at the moment. We, uh, we're carrying out several projects. Some are research and development for our own uh, research, and then some with the industry, with some industry partners. So I'll give you some examples of some of the research areas so you can give, get a, uh, you know, an idea about what is, uh, how we can use those technologies um, in real, in real time. So the first one is a laser-based weed sensor. Maybe you've heard about this one. We actually use lasers in, in conjunction with microchips, microelectronics, and nanotechnology and thin films to basically illuminate the vegetation with lasers. And then from the reflected light, we would be able to detect whether this, this a green plant is a weed or is a crop. So if it's a weed, we spray it without, without the need to spray the, the crop. So we can improve the yield of the, uh, the crop and then we don't use herbicides so in, in, uh, uh, protect the environment and also use less water because when you apply herbicide, you need to mix them with water. Another uh, very potential project also we're working on the use of nano and microparticles to actually we embed them between two glass panes to uh, and with uh, some thin, thin film technology to actually make a clearer glass that can pass the visible light through the, the, uh, the, the room. And then you can see actually the natural light, so you don't need to use lighting inside the room, but we block the infrared and thermal heat from coming into the, uh, the room. So that in this case, we can actually reduce the cost on cooling. And even if you heat the room in the winter, then we can actually keep the heat inside instead of coming and sending it outside. So we can actually save also on heating at the same time. This is a, a project on uh, green energy, and then we, we actually the world leader in this area by using the technology of micro and nano optics and optoelectronics and solar cells. So the third one is also recently we've been engaged in this, and this is automatic remote catheter navig navigation control. So this is how to actually insert a catheter for a heart surgeon to do ablation and operation within the heart is basically to how to control this via the electronics automatically. And this needs some micro microelectronics and nanoelectronics and also some software and hardware, so both at the same time. This is another area we're also engaged in. 
The other one in health as, as well is a microfluidic system on the chip or lab on the chip. And this is what we, we recently started to work with uh, Professor Mel Zeman on the, the use of nanomagnetic particles. And we inject them into the blood cell and blood stream. And then we, they encircle the, the cancer cells. And we can use a, a micromagnet integrated into the chip that it can actually pull them and separate the blood cells from the cancer cell. This is also a potential. We've got the potential to do this. Um, the other one is the optical interconnect, which is we won the inventor of the year in 2007 on this one. And this is how to actually use high speed uh, optical pulses to communicate between the processors at a very high speed to improve the speed of computers at home by maybe 100 times by using the optical fiber to communicate rather than co uh, coaxial or copper microstrips. Now, to be able to do this, we need to build an infrastructure, and that's what we built. We have a very well world classic lean room fabrication facility where we can make the nano and micro. And then regarding the question about the, the partners, the partners are, are having access to our clean room, and they can actually fabricate something they can't do it sometimes in their own universities. And uh, we also have a world-class photonics lab, so anything to do with lasers and optics and whatever uh, structures and, and characterization we have, and then an electronics lab where we can actually develop our own printed circuit boards at ECU here. So we have a very good infrastructure. So briefly, quickly, regarding the CRN so far in eight months, we have uh, appointed the two postdoc, uh, postdoctoral uh, research fellows. We have had one two-day workshop uh, with international partners and then the partners from uh, Melbourne and, and Adelaide University. We applied with Melbourne University for an ILC discovery grant. We also applied for an uh, Australia China Science and Research Center uh, a grant application with uh, a, a university in China, Southeast University, and then the, this will directly benefit the, the SCRN uh, project. Uh, we also applied for a LEAF grant with Melbourne University. And we put an expression of interest for an advanced nanophotonic center with the, the, the partners being also partners with us. We've published so far three high impact journals, A plus, and then we apply, we submitted uh, a lot of conference papers as well as a, a journal papers. There's many, uh, probably more than uh, 10, but I can't, I can't count them all now. Um, the other thing is we have two PhD students working on the CRN a project, and we have two ECU industry collaborative grant applications submitted, and an ECU ECR application as well, and then two ARC linkage grant applications are being prepared for the next round. That's briefly what we have done so far. Thank you.